ಅಂತರಾಯಿತಿ ನಿರೂಪ ಶಾಂತೆ ಶಾಂತ ಪಾವನ ಮಚ್ಚಂತಿ ವೈಭವಂ ತಂ ನರಂ ವಪುಷಿ ಕುಂಜರಂ ಮುಖೇ ಮನ್ಮಹೇ ಕಿಮಿ ತುಂದಿಲ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನಿ ವ್ಯೋಮವದ್ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತೇ ನಮಃ ಯಾಂತನ್ನಾತಿ ಮಧ್ಯಂ ನಹಿ ಕರಚರಣ ನಾಮಗೋತ್ರ ನ ಸೂತ್ರ ನೋ ಜಾತಿರ್ನೈವ ವರ್ಣಾನಭವತಿ ಪುರುಷೋ ನಾನಪುಂಸಂ ನ ಚೀ ನಾಕಾರಂ ನೈವ ಕಾರಂ ನ ಹಿ ಜನಿಮರಣ ನಾಸ್ತಿ ಪುಣ್ಯಂ ನ ಪಾಪಂ ತತ್ವ ನೋ ತತ್ವಮೇಕ ಸಹಜ ಸಮರಸ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಮೌನವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾಕಟಿತಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮತ್ವ ಯುವಾನ ವಶಿಷ್ಠಾಂತೇವ ಸದೃಶಿಗಣೈರಾವೃತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠೈ ಆಚಾರ್ಯೇಂದ್ರ ಕರಕಲಿತಚಿನ್ಮುದ್ರಮಾನಂದಮೂರ್ತಿ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಾರಾಮ ಉದಿತ ವದನ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಮೇಡೇ ವೇದಾಂತಾಭಿಭಾಸಕೇ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿನೇ ನಾನಾವಾದಿನಕೇಂದ್ರ ಸಂಘಭವೇ ಯೋಗೀಂದ್ರ ವಂದ್ಯಾಯ ಮೋಹಧ್ವಾಂತಿವಾಕರಾಯ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಿಭೃತೆ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಸತತ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಯ ಬೋಧಾತ್ಮನೆ ಅಪಾರ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ ಸುಖವಾರಿರಾಶೇ ಯಸ್ಯೋರ್ಮಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಭುವನ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಗುಹಾಹಿದ ತಂ ರಮಣ ಗಭೀರ ಚಿಂತಾವಿಹೀನ ಹೃದಯ ಚಿಂತೆಯಿ ದೇಹಂ ಮೃಣ್ಮಯವಜ್ಜಡಾತ್ಮಕಮಹಂ ಬುದ್ಧಿರ್ನ ತಸ್ಥಿ ನಾಹಂ ತತ್ತದಭಾವಸುಪ್ತಿ ಸಮೇ ಸಿದ್ಧಾತ್ಮಸದ್ಭಾವತ ಕೋಹಂ ಭಾವಯುತ ಕುತೋ ವರಧಿಯಾತ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠಾತ್ಮನ ಸೋಹಂ ಸ್ಫೂರ್ತಿ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಪೂರ್ಣೋ ವಿಭಾತಿ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಕರುಣಾಪೂರ್ಣ ಸುಧಾಬ್ಧೆ ಕಬಳಿತ ಘನ ವಿಶ್ವರೂಪ ಕಿರಣಾವಲ್ಯ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನ್ ಅರುಣೋ ಭವ ಚಿತ್ತಕಂಜ ಸುವಿಕಾಸಾಯ ತ್ವಯ್ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಸರ್ವ ಭೂತ್ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಪ್ರಲೀನಮೇತಿತ್ರ ಹೃದಯಹಮಿತ್ಯಾತ್ಮತೆಯ ನೃತ್ಯಸಿ ಭೋ ತೇವದಂತಿ ಹೃದಯ ನಾಮ ಅಹಮಿತಿ ಗುತ ಆಯಾತಿ ತನ್ವಿಶ್ಯಾಂತ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟಯಾತ್ಯಮಲಧಿಯ ಅವಗಮ್ಯ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಶಾಮ್ಯತ್ಯರುಣಾಚಲ ನದೀವಾಬ್ಧೌ ತ್ಯಕ್ತ ವಿಷಯ ಬಾಹ್ಯ ರುದ್ಧ ಪ್ರಾಣೇನ ರುದ್ಧ ಮನಸಾಂತಸ್ವಾಂ ಧ್ಯಾನ್ ಪಶ್ಯತ್ ಯೋಗೀ ದೀಧಿ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಮಹೀಯಂತೆ ತ್ವಯ್ಯರ್ಪಿತ ಮನಸಾ ತ್ವಾಂ ಪಶ್ಯನ್ ಸರ್ವ ತವಾಕೃತಿತೆಯ ಸತತ ಭಜತೆ ಅನನ್ಯಪ್ರೀತ್ಯ ಸಜಯತ್ಯರುಣಾಚಲ ತ್ವಯಿ ಸುಖೇ ಮಗ್ನ ಹೃದಯ ಕುಹರ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಕೇವಲ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಮಾತ್ರ ಯಹಮಹಮಿತಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಆತ್ಮರೂಪೇಣ ಭಾತಿ ಹೃದಯ ವಿಷಮನಸಾ ಸ್ವಂ ಚಿನ್ವತ ಪವನ ಚಲನರೋಧಾದ್ ಆತ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠೋ ಭವತ್ವ ಯಾದ ಜಗತ್ ಸರ್ವ ಯಸ್ವ ಪ್ರಲೀಯತೆ ಏನೇದ ಧಾರ್ಯತೆ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಜ್ಞಾನಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನ ಶುಪ್ರದಿ ಸ್ಥಿರಚಲನಿಕರವ್ಯಾಪಿಭಿರ್ವ್ಯಾಪ್ಯ ಲೋಕಾನ್ 
भुक्वा भोगान स्थविष्टान पुनरपि धिषणोद्भासितान कामजन्यान पीत्वा सर्वान विशेषान स्वपिति मधुरभुं मायया भोजयन्नहं माया संख्या तुरीयं परम अमृतम अजम ब्रह्मयत्तन नतोस्मि अरुणाचल शिरोद्भूत संप्रदाय प्रवर्तकम करुणार्नवमीडेतम रमणाक्यमहं महहां For the last six days we were having a series of talks on Bhagavan's Ulladhinarpratim. It's the most profoundest of Bhagavan's works. So many who were not able to understand the exposition in Tamil. They wanted a special talk on Bhagavan's teachings in English. Hence this special session. Today, I was myself in confusion. At least we have to give some caption. Whatever we may speak, the subject is same. But you should provide some, some title. So I was thinking, what should be the title? If we take Bhagavan's Arunachala Pancharatnam, that also will take many days. So I was in a fix. I, do, I came. In fact, today morning also there was no plan. Just half an hour before the talk, Bhagavan himself provided the subject. It's Hastamalaga Stotram. As you have this book, Song of Silence. This original work It came out It flowed out from a boy who was a born Jnani. His name was Hastamalaka. Bhagavan has translated that original Sanskrit work to Tamil. Many Westerners who are here, they also know the work. Every week Parayanam on Friday, it is the last work which which sounds like Vedic Mantra. It's the last work that we do Parayanam. Inkuru ni yar pillai Yarudai maintan nidan Ingushal gindrayun peer Yenani engirundu Ingu vandana yen ullam Inbura ishaipa yendre 
சங்கரன் நவில பாலன் சாற்றிட வாய் திறந்தான் தட் ஒர்க் சோ இவன் தோசு are not in a position to understand the language even they read this work in transcription so that is the text we are taking one or two verses we may be able to expound the very thing that bhagwan has selected this work shows how important how profound that work is apart from his own writings bhagwan has taken some work from shiva agama shastra that is devi kalotram and few works of adi shankara acharya and one special work which stands apart is this astamalakam this work this astamalaka stotram this song of a born jnani Shankaracharya himself has written a commentary to this work. There is a story behind this work. Before going into that story, just we have to see certain points. once one of bhagwan's devotees he asked some doubt to bhagwan and bhagwan gave a reply as usually a very precise reply and this devotee listening bhagwan's words he remarked bhagwan it sounds very new i don't think anyone else in our tradition has given this teaching like this he was actually excited and out of his thrill he was expressing bhagwan this is very new teaching nobody else has done this nobody else has given this but you know what bhagwan spoke what reply bhagwan gave bhagwan said do not say like that if our former teachers former rishis the sages if they have not spoken these things these words will not come out of my mouth munnorgal sollala endral enoda vaayala inda vaayala varadu oi if they have not expounded if they have not taught if this teaching is not there in the upanishads neither will it come through my mouth because the source is same and one of the greatest thing that bhagwan has done is bhagwan who was ever established in the self who had no sankalpa to write anything in fact devotees poked him kindled him to write something very rarely bhagwan has written anything without some outer compulsion 
యు నో ద స్టోరీ ఆఫ్ అరుణాచల అక్షరమణ మాలై అండ్ భగవాన్ వాస్ లివింగ్ ఇన్ విరూపాక్ష కేవ్ కాన్స్టెంట్లీ డివోటీస్ వెర్ పెస్టరింగ్ హిమ్ టు రైట్ సంథింగ్ బికాస్ దే వర్ గోయింగ్ అరౌండ్ దట్ అరుణాచల అగ్రహారం అరౌండ్ ద టెంపుల్ ఫోర్ బిక్ష అండ్ వైల్ గోయింగ్ ఫర్ బిక్ష ద యూస్ టు సింగ్ తేవారం ఆర్ సమ్ వర్సెస్ రిటర్న్ బై ఆదిశంకర ఆర్ సమ్ బడి దెన్ దే ఫెల్ట్ వీ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ సమ్ వర్సెస్ రిటర్న్ బై భగవాన్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ భగవాన్ షుడ్ ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ his intimate relationship that he had with arunachala that should pour out from his heart that we should get so they started constantly pestering bhagwan bhagwan give us something write something bhagwan said enna elidrathuk irukku oi what is there to write already everything is there many many saints have written tevaram is there tiruvachakam is there it is enough that you read those works by heart those works and sing those works there is no sankalpa for me to write anything new but this devotees again and again they were telling bhagwan write something write something and one day when bhagwan was going around arunachala that will be a very slow process sometimes it will take a whole day bhagwan himself has said you should walk as if a pregnant queen will walk princess will walk with that gate with that dignity as if she you see she will be very cautious about what is lying in her like that a sadhaka a seeker should constantly do self inquiry put his mind inward with introverted mind with his full attention in heart he has move he has to move around arunachala bhagwan himself did that his body alone will slowly move and even his ordinary walk was like that not simply pradakshina whenever you can see in the video when he goes around you can see that body moves with such rhythm and you can see himself established in the heart so like that he was moving about and some devotee who was walking behind him he gave a paper and a pencil to bhagwan and said bhagwan please write something spontaneously it came and bhagwan started writing arunachalamena agame ninai pavar అహత్తై వేర రూపాయి అరుణాచల విత్ ఆ హీ స్టార్టెడ్ అండ్ సమ్ వర్సెస్ రామస్వామి పిల్ల యూస్ టు సే ఐ డోంట్ నో వెదర్ హీ వాస్ దేర్ విత్ భగవాన్ అట్ దట్ టైమ్ ఆర్ ఈ హర్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ సమ్ అదర్ డివోటీస్ సమ్ వర్సెస్ హీ యూస్ టు షో ద స్పాట్ వేర్ భగవాన్ రోడ్ దోస్ వర్సెస్ షేరాయనిల్ మెయ్ నీరాయ్ ఉరుగి కన్నీరాత్రి అళివేన అరుణాచల ఇన్ వన్ వర్స్ భగవాన్ సేస్ హే అరుణాచల ఇఫ్ యూ రెఫ్యూస్ టు కమ్ అండ్ మర్జ్ ఇన్ మీ ఆర్ మేక్ మీ మర్జ్ ఇన్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ ఐ విల్ మెల్ట్ ఇన్ టియర్స్ మై బాడీ మై బోన్స్ విల్ మెల్ట్ ఇన్ టియర్స్ అండ్ దట్ టియర్స్ విల్ ఫ్లో లైక్ ఎ రివర్ 
when ramaswami pillai said it's just like a spot just before that bhagwan's bridge now they have broken that bridge when you go around giri pradakshana just before that bhagwan's bridge there is another small bridge that spot he said bhagwan sat like this and wrote that verse and literally tears were pouring out of his eyes and his own kaubinam that loin cloth was drenched in the tears bhagwan himself later on expressed i was wondering from where these tears are coming so by the time he came back giri pradakshana aksharamanamalai was over like that many many works came spontaneously through the compulsion of some of the devotees we don't know how this hastamalagam came but this is one of the profoundest works that bhagwan has translated and the thing that i wanted to say is if bhagwan has simply written his own works and if he had not translated any of shankaracharya's works perhaps there is a chance that we may start another religion in his name so bhagwan was very cautious not to stand outside that royal road of rishi marga the tradition so he was very cautious that there is no new teaching the teaching is only fresh there is no new teaching the insight may be new but the teaching can never be new because the truth can never be new if it is new it can never be truth navo navo bhavati jayamana veda in upanishad they themselves say truth is every time a person when he recognizes the truth it is fresh but it can never be new because it is the thing it is the essence in everyone it is the truth in everyone and everyone can experience the same truth and the same truth when expressed by many sounds very new very fresh but it is not new so to guard us from committing the error of forming a new sect or a new religion or a new teaching in the name of bhagwan bhagwan did a wonderful thing of translating sagracharya vivek chudamani atma bodha dakshana murti stotra and to give the root in this land of shiva arunachala where that shivagama shastra is so deeply established he also translated devikalotram and sarva that atma sakshatkar prakaranam that also he translated and then you will say that it is shaiva siddhanta or bhagwan although advaiti is a shaivite so to guard from committing that error he translated bhagavad gita 40 verses and some verses from bhagavata also so bhagwan has escaped he has made the road very clear declared very clear the truth satyam can never be anything new it can be only fresh now coming to our subject this particular work hastamalaka hastam means hand amalakam means nallikai they say it's gooseberry you know that fruit there you get it in states america or is some indian name that they have given i don't know you anyhow you are here you can identify that fruit it is nellikai what we call as nellikai it's gooseberry 
they translate it as good. Sometimes, you know, this Vedantic works, when they translate to English, it sounds very funny because sometimes this Indian name for fruits, they go to that biological, botanical names, which even Westerners will not understand. So, I don't know whether gooseberry is completely... Nelika is there, right? Nelika. Nelika is there. Then. But here is Nelika, it's very small. Amalaka. Amalaka is Sanskrit. Hasta, Amalaka. Hasta means hand. Amalaka means hand. Amalaka means hand. Hasta, Amalaka. Hasta means hand. Amalaka means a small fruit. You simply, you have to understand that it is something which you can hold inside your palms. Inside your palm. You can just, if you hold your hand like this, it will go inside it. Like that, the truth is made so simple, so immediate. It is shown directly to you that it is already here, it is already now, it is already in you as your own self. To express that it is so simple, they have used the name Hastamalaka, Kayinil Kani. In Tamil they say Kayinil Kani. It is just like fruit in the hand. And in Arunachala Akshara Madamalai, Bhagavan says, Arunachala, you are Kayinil Kani. Kayinil Kani, un meirasam kondu, Uvakai veri kolla arul arunachala. Kayinil kani un meirasam kondu. Uvakai veri kolla arul arunachala. You are able to recollect that song, Aksharmana Malai. He says, Arunachala, you are like a fruit in the hand. That is, you are ever in me as I, 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 I. You are the self in me. As the awareness in me. You are ever experienced as I am. But still, I should taste that awareness and should get intoxicated. Uvagai veri, inundation. I have been carrying this kayinil kani, this fruit, for many, many births. It is there. The experience of self is common to all. It is in everybody. But still, how many of us pay attention to it? So Bhagavan says, Hey Arunachala, you are like a small fruit in one's palm. Reveal it to me. Let me get inundated. Let me get ino- intoxicated. Uvagai veri kola arul arunachala. By recognizing the self, by knowing that this I, I, I within me, it is just like the space inside the pot. The space inside the pot has nothing to do with the pot. It is the infinite space. Like that this I, I, I inside me has nothing to do with this body. It is not the body which is saying I, I. The pure awareness which is ever experienced as aham, 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 aham. Uninterrupted experience of one's existence. Bhagavan says, Hey Arunachala, it is you. Actually, experience of I is there for all, but the necessity of Bhagavan or a Guru is to tell you that what you are experiencing is not your individuality, but it is God. It is Arunachala. It is the presence of Arunachala. It is Ishvara. It is Purna Vastu, which is experience, ever experience as I am. And that experience of truth, it is very natural.
in hastamalakam they said it is a like fruit in your hand in bhagavan in atmavidya kirtanam said even that simile is a bluff because there is a distance between you and the fruit kayamalagakkani poyai oliya migumeyai ulade aanma aye ati sulabham atmavittai in atmavidya kirtanam bhagavan said aye ati sulabham you know what aye means usually i translate it as shame shame bhagavan said shame shame are you not ashamed of yourself because truth is experience ever experience that is the self still you fail to recognize it pay attention to that so that ever experience truth it is so simple so direct still it is a great mystery that people fail to recognize all these sadhanas all this yoga system all these darshanas all these scriptures all these books are written are found out only to reveal what is ever revealed only to experience what is ever natural to you as your own self as your own existence all this enormous effort is put to recognize what is very natural what is what they say is effortless we read so many books we write so many books effortless meditation effortless awareness effortless jnana but we put so much effort to recognize what is what the effort can never touch that is why in shaiva siddhanta they say in in tamil vedanta they say ishvara sakshatkara atma sakshatkara and they put a third thing they say krupa sakshatkara they say only when you know what is grace the mysterious thing which reveals the truth transcending your personality your effort which bridges which connects your effort with that effortless infinite that something which makes you whole which makes you purna that that bridge that connecting link which cannot be explained in words which we call as grace or arul or krupa that the the moment you recognize that grace that grace element then only then your experience of truth becomes purna is the song intoxicating song of grace that we see in bhagwan's arunachala stuti panchakam it is not some ramana maharshi singing some verses in praise of a mountain there bhagwan says i was born as an average boy in tiruchuri as the son of sundaramayya and arahamal this mysterious shakti caught hold of me there pulled me to its heart center and made me recognize the truth and he says tan padam enak tandanan he says and bestowed his absolute state on me tan padam enak tandanan it is not that i have attained but he made me whole he made me attain he made me stay in that state so that from this source the stream of jnana will flow 
ஜகத்தில் சின்மயம் செழிக்க த டீச்சிங் ஆஃப் செல்ஃப் என்கொயரி வில் ஃபிளரிஷ் இன் த வேர்ல்டு இன் ஜகத் மீன்ஸ் வேர்ல்டு the teaching of self enquiry will flourish in the world for that arunachala caught hold of me and bestowed on me the highest blessing of making me stay in his state so this is bhagwan's life now we come to this story in shankaracharya's life adi shankara thousands of years back i simply say thousands of years because there is lot of controversy about it the shankara was born 2000 2000 years back or 1200 years back there is a big controversy we are fortunate that we were born very near bhagwan's time so we are not caught in controversy otherwise if we where would have been if it is after 1000 years we would have wasted our life instead of studying bhagwan's work we would have started fighting whether bhagwan was born 1000 years back or 2000 years back so many years back when adi shankara he was not like bhagwan although the teaching is same clarity is same but he had to move about the length and breadth of this country just like a storm he moved about from kashmir to kanyakumari and they say he moved about thrice but we don't know how in those time by walk we have to go and that too he lived only up to 32 at the age of 8 he left south that is kerala and went to madhya pradesh to meet his guru govinda bhagavat pada it is just like bhagwan coming to arunachala only only thing only difference is shankara had a human guru bhagwan had a mountain guru it does not make any difference at all if you know what guru means just as bhagwan came to arunachala and sent kandavan yavanana karutinul nada kandavan indrida nindradu kandeen just like that when shankara is a boy of 8 you just think about it boy who was only 8 years old he walks almost 1000 miles to madhya pradesh there he go to narmada on the banks of narmada he meets his guru govinda bhagavat pada and the story goes the very first encounter guru asks who are you boy who are you where are you coming from kashtvam bala mama hridi ratihi kaajid ananda murcha when i see you i feel so blissful so happy who are you and the story is so beautiful that 8 year old boy he didn't say i am shankara coming from kerala the moment govinda bhagavat pada asked this boy just exploded with 10 verses and he says na bhumir na toyam na tejo na vayu na kham nindriyam va na tesham samuha anaikantikatva susupte eka siddhas tadeko vasishta shiva kevaloham na mata pita va na deva na loka ந வேதானீர்த்தம் புருவந்தி சுஷுப்தோ நிரஸ்தாதிஷூன்யாத்மகத்வாது ததேகோ வசிஷ்டிவேவலோகம் டென் வர்சஸ் 
In that verse he says, I am not this body. I am not this body which is made of five elements. Panjabhuta. I am not this body, I am not this mind, I am not this intellect. When you negate everything, what remains as pure awareness, as auspiciousness itself, as the deathless, birthless, ever experienced existence, which is available even in deep sleep. In the very first verse he says, in waking state, the body is there, the mind is there, and I am. In dream state, the body is not there, but the mind operates, I exist. But in the deep sleep, neither the body exists, nor the mind exists. I as a person is not there, but still, I exist. In deep sleep, it's the everyday experience without the body, without the mind, without the intellect, without any qualification, definition, I remain as contentment, as happiness, as wholeness. Every day I declare the sleep was so refreshing. I do not know what was happening there. But I was whole, I was happy. And the joy that you had in deep sleep did not come from any contact. It was not contact born. It was not through senses, it was not through mind that you got that joy. Without mind, without body, without ego. There was a complete contentment in deep sleep. And what was there in deep sleep? Shankara says, what remained in that state that I am. I am not this person, but what was in that deep sleep state as existence, that Shivam, that Purnam, that is my real nature, that I am I. This is Shankaracharya's story. So, according to that legend, Shankara stayed with his Guru Govinda Bhagavad Pada. Two years he stayed. After that, his master said, you move about. Govinda Bhagavad Pada said, go to Varanasi, Kashi, and start teaching your experience, but in our tradition, we never say my experience, we say what the sages have given, that Aupanisha, that jnana, you give, give out. So from Kashi, his mission started. He started moving about from Kashi to Himalayas, from Himalayas to down to the south. So he started moving, spreading the teaching and his period was a very confusing state of affairs were there. Many, many, many sects. They say about 72 religions were there in India, not one or two. 72 sects fighting each other with conflicting ideas, all of them claiming their source from the Vedas. So, he had something like a war, something like a battle mission, battle for peace, but not with weapon, with only words and with teaching. So, he moved about towards the south and when he reached Karnataka, in a village, there, is a, there was a village, Sri In that village, there were many Brahmins who were strictly orthodox. 
leading a very highly disciplined life, very learned in Vedas. And all of them were Agnihotris. This is a very rare category that you find even among Brahmins, Agnihotri Brahmanas. And it is a great fortune that we are having two Agnihotris in front of us. It's a very rare thing. Those who maintain fire, three fires, Ahavaniya, Gargapatya and uh, Dakshinagni. These three fires they maintain till their body drops. And that fire is maintained for generations and generations right from the Vedic period. Without break. Father, from father to son, from son to his son. Just like that, that fire continues and in that same fire their body should be cremated. So that Agnikarya, they say when Shankaracharya came to that village, there were about 2000 Brahmins who were maintaining that Agnihotra fire. They were all very ritualistic. There, a Brahmana, his name was Prabhakara, he had a son, but that boy was a very mysterious boy. Right from his birth, he refused to speak. Only if you speak, you can teach. If the boy speaks, you can teach him some Vedas. But this boy refused to speak, refused to learn anything. This person, he was really, you know, the only shock that a Brahmin, a ritualistic orthodox Brahmin can have is that his son is not able to perform any rituals, perform any Vedic karma, not able to learn Vedas. So his father was really, that was a great tragedy for him. So he took his son to many physicians, Ayurvedic physicians. All of them, they declared there is no problem in the body of your boy. He is physically well. There is nothing wrong with his body, with his mouth, with his tongue, with his... Uh, that vocal cord and we can clearly see that he is intelligent but we don't know why he is not reacting. No reaction. Even if you beat him, he will not get angry. No reaction at all. Always peaceful. Only thing is, he, that boy's mother, she was very attached to that boy and she found whenever her mind was disturbed, she will go and sit with, in the presence of her child, she will become peaceful. They found that he is much more peaceful, profoundly peaceful than anybody around, but they could not make him act in the world, make him participate in the society, make him participate in the scriptural learning or rituals, in religious life, he was not at all interested in religious life or worldly life. Neither Vedas nor Loka. So he was in that state. So somebody told that Adi Shankara is coming. When Shankara was coming to that village, particular village, Shankara was already 27. And he had many, many disciples with him and a great following, even a king, Sudhanva was following him. So there was a great end to, what they call an end to Raja. Great group of uh, following was there, Goshti. With many scholars and great yogis were there with him. With so many followers he came to that village and Sankaracharya was remaining, staying there in one place and this, this Brahmin, Prabhakara, he and his wife, they took that child. He was at that time, he was 12 years old. 
he was a boy so they took him to shankaracharya and said o oh master he is our boy but we could not put him into brahmacharyam that upanayana we could not make conduct his upanayana samskara because he refuses to learn anything so we have taken him to all possible physicians but we could not cure his disease they thought it is a disease so with your grace we expect to get him cured so please bless this boy telling this they made the boy prostrate they made the boy prostrate in fact you know what he says oh lord this boy of mine is dumb and deaf from his very babyhood he behaves mysteriously he never looks at any person his eyes are open but he refuses to look they say he his eyes are open but he refuses to look kannu therandu da irukku paakradilla tad vishnu ho paramam padam sada pasyanti suraya diviva chakshuratatam vedame enna solradhu engiyo vacant space paathu irukra maari veda they themselves describe the picture of a sage his eyes are open they were open as if it is staring in vacant space but ever lords in vishnu ho paramam padam sada pasyanti they say ever beholding the radiance of vishnu the radiance of self radiance of that inner being you can see bhagavan's figure sitting silent still like arunachalam so this boy he was only 12 years old his parents made him prostrate he just laid down there in that same posture he was lying there when the brahmin was speaking like this acharya was looking straight into the boy's eyes shankara was just looking at the boy's eyes acharya's face was radiating so much joy and peace at the boy's sight that the other disciples who were there felt that their master was drinking the calmly form of the boy through his eyes shankara acharya was just staring at that young boy all other disciples padma pada sureshwara many of them were around they were just looking at that beautiful scene as if shankara was drinking that boy through his eyes the boy for some time refused to look at the master even though shankara was forcing him to look at him but that boy was refusing to look his eyes had the dreamy look of a mystic and felt that he has never looked at any person in this life he was staring at the vacant space but shankara saw through him the boy he understood is rooted in the inner flame of awareness he was so lost in that ocean of bliss that he never cared to peep out through the senses to look at the world but now the time has come for the boy to wake up from this divine slumber to sing a song of ecstasy now he is in the presence of a great master who han- understood him fully so shri acharya asked the boy shankara asked him who are you the same question which his teacher asked him the same question shankara was asking who are you kastvam shisho kasya kuto siganta kim naam atetvam kuta agato si etan mayoktam vadachar bhagatvam mat pritaye priti vivardhano si dear child who are you 
to whom do you belong where are you going what is your name whence do you come from oh dear little one respond to my question please make me more happy i already feel so much joy in your presence you are just kindling that fire do you remember your real nature do you have any recollection about yourself i know that you don't belong to this world what is your nature who are you this is what they call as prashna diksha bhagwan himself always gave that prashna diksha not mantra diksha whenever you anyone asked doubt bhagwan used to counter question who is asking this doubt who is the doubter find out the doubter who tells me that i am a samsari who tells me that i am bound who is here who wants to get released if you have to answer you have to say i the moment you say i you have to pay attention to it the moment you pay attention to the i you will see that it is not a localized individual it is the infinite pure awareness so when shankara asks kastvam koham kuta ayataha kame janani kome tataha who are you what is your nature that boy who was keeping himself silent for so many years they say opened his mouth looked at shankaracharya for the first time as if somebody arrives in the window the window was open vacant and you put that you you just touch the calling bell and somebody arrives in the window and peeps through the window like that his eyes were open but there was nobody seeing when shankara asked this question that boy suddenly looked at acharya like this and he declared and he said naham manushyo na ca deva yakshau na brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra न ब्रह्मचारी न गृहीवनस्थ भिक्षुन चाहम निज बोध रूप दिस इज द वर्स इंकुरूनी यार पिल्लाय यारुडै मैंदन नीदान यंगु शलगिन रायुन पेर यन्ननी यंगिरंदिन इंगु वंदन यंदुल्लम एनुल्लम इंपुर इशै पायेंद्र சங்கரன் நவில பாலன் சாற்றிட வாய் திறந்தான் இன் திஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வேர்ஸ் भगवान सेज சங்கரா ஆஸ் திஸ் क्वेश्चन இங்க குரு நீ யார் பிள்ளை யாருடைய மைந்தன் நீதான் எங்கு செல்கின்றாய் உன் பேர் என்ன நீ எங்கிருந்து இங்கு வந்தனை என் உள்ளம் இன்புற இசைபா என்று சங்கரன் நவில bhagwan also added when shankara said this that boy just that he started beating exploding he started beating the drum of self knowledge balan satrida vai tirandan he started beating the drum of self knowledge he just opened his mouth and he said naranalan suraniyakkan nalan nanalan andanan matru arasanum vanikan sudran allanal brahmachari girahiyum vanaprastan kedagal sanniyasi nirayinil aarum allen nijabodha vadivanaame the tamil correct translate complete translation of the sanskrit நரநலன் சுரணியக்கன் நாகம் மனுஷோ 
न च देवयक्षौ न ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय वैश्य शूद्र न ब्रह्मचारी न गृही वनस्थ भिक्षुर्न चाहम निज बोध रूप हस्तामलग सेड ऐ एम नॉट ए मैन नईदर ए देवा और ए यक्ष ऐ एम नॉट ए ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय वैश्य और शूद्र नॉर एम ए ब्रह्मचारी नॉट ए हाउस होल्डर और ए वन पस्थ हु लिव्स इन फॉरेस्ट ऐ एम नॉट इवन सन्यासी ई से आई एम नॉट ए मॉन्क ऐ एम द सेल हूज नेचर इज प्योर अवेरनेस निज बोध रूप ओनली वेन यू आइडेंटिफाई यूर सेल्फ विद द बॉडी यू कैन से आई एम ए ब्राह्मीन आई एम ए क्षत्रिय आई एम एन इंडियन आई एम एन अमेरिकन I am an Australian. Only when you identify with the body, see, without using thoughts, you can never declare your identity. To give any definition, thoughts are necessary. That means you have to clothe yourself with the mind. Then only you can declare, "I am somebody." somebody asked bhagwan bhagwan is it not our duty to be patriotic bhagwan said your duty is not to be this or that but to be what you are the moment you identify with the body you become somebody you are in the society you are in the world but are you the body body nulladin arpad bhagwan as are you the body it is not that you have to give up the identification with the body bhagwan says there is nothing to give up because there is no identification with the body it is apramanika find out what is this i the experience of chit the experience of awareness as i i i the moment you recognize it the moment you pay attention to it you will know that it has nothing to do with the body the body is somebody in the world it is a brahmana it is a kshatriya it is a vaishya it is a hindu muslim or christian or american or indian some kind of classification is necessary for the body during bhagwan's days in dining hall you will see in the third book enna solrathu a partition you see a partition there in those days brahmins who were very orthodox they used to sit on the other side of the partition and those who were not brahmins they used to sit this side of the partition and you can see bhagwan's photo there actually that partition was really in the middle now it has gone a little bit that side so bhagwan will sit in the middle both the non brahmins and the brahmins can see bhagwan so one brahmin boy who was a revolutionary he said this differences should not be observed in bhagwan's presence he said i will sit with non brahmins i will not sit with brahmins and he sat with the non brahmins bhagwan had no objection but somebody there they said you should not sit there you should sit this side and there was a fight a fight ensued and this boy also started giving lecture he said this kind of difference these are all evil we should not observe this and you can see bhagwan's nature he will not interfere till the problem comes to him <laughs> 
So he was not at all looking, he was not at all participating, he was going on taking food. And this boy came to Bhagavan and said, Bhagavan, this is not right. These things are happening in front of you and you are not telling anything. Then Bhagavan simply looked at him and asked, Don't you have any caste or any difference? He said, No, then you should be sitting with me. <laughs> because these people are all, both these sects, those who sit on this side and that side, both of them identify with something. Whether you identify with caste, or whether you identify with country, or whether you identify with anything, even man-woman difference, as long as you carry some difference you will be carrying, any difference is evil. So, unless you transcend that state and remain established in the self, inside that field of maya, in whichever corner you sit, it is same. The only way to go out, it is find out what you are, what is your real nature. Jati nidhi kula gotra duragam. Nama Rupa Guna Dosha Vajitam Desha Kala Vishayadi Vartiyat Brahma Tattva Masi Bhava Yatmani Yat Param Sagala Vaga Gocharam Gocharam Vimala Bodha Chakshusha Shuddha Chit Ganamanadi Vastuyat Brahma Tattva Masi Bhava Yatmani Shad birur mi bira yogi yogi hird bhavitam na karana irvi bhavitam buddhya vedya mana vadya mastiyat brimhatatva masi bhavayatani. That Guru says, Know that you are that Brahman, tatva masi. Remain established as the self which has nothing to do with the upadis, nothing to do with the body, nothing to do with the mind, nothing to do with this personality. You are that infinite truth untouched by any of the corruptions of this body or mind or intellect or ego. Whatever may be the body or the mind or the ego, it cannot touch the self. And the Shruti proves it by showing that deep sleep state. Shruti says, even if you are a criminal, you cannot carry even a tinge of that sin to the deep sleep state, showing that state Upanishad declares, Asango hi ayam purushaha. The self remains asanga, untouched, uncorrupted by anything done by the body, mind and ego. So to go out of this sin, to become blemishless, the only way is to recognize what you are in your essential nature. Not by do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts are necessary inside the field. Inside the field, you cannot simply say, I am blemishless and I can do anything. You will get caught. Because the body, mind, ego is inside the field. It has sin. It, if you accept the body, mind, you there, is, there are differences. Dharma is necessary. But the moment you go inside and recognize the self, you go beyond dharma, you go beyond adharma, you go beyond karma, you go beyond akarma, everything. Anyatra dharmada, anyatra dharmada, anyatra asmad, krita kritaad, anyatra bhutaatsa bhavyaatsa, yatta pasyasi tadvada. That self, which is absolutely blemishless, I am. That boy declared, I am that blemishless, pure consciousness. I am not a man, neither a deva, nor a yaksha. I am not a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya or a Shudra, nor am I a Brahmachari or a householder or a forest dweller. I am not even a monk. I am the self whose nature is pure awareness. Nimittam manasakshuradi pravartam nirastha kilobadi rakashakalpaham ravirloka cheshta nimittam yathaya Sanityopalabdhi Swarupoham Atma. As the sun is the cause and inspirer for the world to be dynamic, so too the self 
is the inspirer and enliver of the mind and the senses the self who is the ever existent experience who by nature is beyond all limiting adjuncts and who is infinite like the space i am you can just go through this verses yam agnushna vannitya bodha swarupam manashakshuradini abodhagatma abodhaga abodhatmagani pravartant aashritya nishkampam ekam sanityo balabdhi swarupoham atma as fire and its heat are inseparable awareness and self are also inseparable the self which is of the nature of pure non dual awareness which is beyond any movement depending on which the inert organs like the mind and senses like the eyes the senses like the eyes they move that atma who is ever present ever experienced awareness self effulgent experience i am says nityopalabdhi swarupoham atma nityopalabdhi means ever got ever experience that anubhuti is ever there and the mystery of self realization is bhagwan says the moment you realize you will laugh at your efforts the efforts which you put to recognize which was ever available that is why they say the revelation of the ever revealed nyata nyapakam prapta prapti that which is ever experience the moment you recognize you get completely released that release does not depend upon your body and its action your mind and its thoughts your intellect and its knowledge you use the body you use the mind you use the intellect to transcend and recognize that ever free ever available nature the moment you recognize you just just like scaffolds are removed this body mind intellect everything becomes just like darkness and sun darkness has nothing to do with the sun if you in shankaracharya in bashya in one place somebody asked should we not take the help of the body and mind and intellect for the sake of atma self shankara says what help the darkness can render to the sun the darkness says i will help the sun because of me the sun is having his light the moment darkness approaches that effulgence it just gets extinguished like that the moment that recognition of the self comes somebody asked swami vivekananda See, you say i am brahman then why do you why i am having headache vivekananda said the moment you recognize that you are brahman you will not have a head to have a pain <laughs> the moment you know that you are the truth it is not that you are going to forego the body you will see that body is only a bluff and but as long as a person carries this illusion of the body and he is not completely free of that illusion this statement that there is no body will sound like some you no know, illogical irrational statement but it is the experience of many 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 sages and they say that that is the truth the moment you recognize the self body will be there in the vision of others but for you there is no body there is no mind there is no intellect because you know just like daylight you know that you are not the body you do not have a body 
you are not the mind you do not have a mind but the body mind they are very much there till the force of prarabdha is over but they are not there even for a second because time itself is not there for the jnani for in his awareness he sees clearly that there is no body or mind but for the onlooker they clearly see that he is having a body he is having a mind that is the mystery the state of that jivan mukti we can infer only when we see somebody like bhagwan or when we listen to stories like this where they say i am that and you see not that simply they declare you see that they are that not simply verbally but in their inner state you see that they are carrying that flame flickerless flame of experience they are having that is the greatest proof for all the scriptures na ham manushyo na ja deva yaksho na brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra ham na brahmachari na grihi vanastu ಭಿಕ್ಷುರ್ನಚಾಹಂ ನಿಜಬೋಧೂಪ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಮನಸ್ಸಕ್ಷುರಾದಿ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತ ನಿರಸ್ತಾಕಿಲೋಪಾಧಿರಾಕಾಶಕಲ್ಪ ರವಿರ್ಲೋಕಚೇಷ್ಟಾ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಯತಾಯಸ್ಸನಿತ್ಯೋಪಲಬ್ಧಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪೋಹಂ ಆತ್ಮ ಘನಚ್ಛನ್ನ ದೃಷ್ಟಿರ್ಘನಚ್ಛನ್ನ ಮರ್ಕ ಯಥಾನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಭಂ ಮನ್ಯತೆ ಚಾತಿ ಮೂಢಹಂ ತಬ್ಧವದ್ಭಾತಿ ಯೋ ಮೂಢದೃಷ್ಟೆ ಸ ನಿತ್ಯೋಪಲಬ್ಧಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪೋಹಂ ಆತ್ಮ ಯೋ ಮಾತ್ಮ ಭವಸಿ ತ್ವಮೇವ ತೋ ನ ವಾಚ್ಯಂ ಮಮ ಕಿಂಚಿತಸ್ತಿ ಯಥಾತವೇಷ್ಟ ಕುರು ಮಾಂ ತಥೈವ ತ್ವಾಂ ಆತ್ಮನಾಥಂ ರಮಣ ಭಜಿ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ